Now at the end of this hallway we enter into the area of the tapestries where we cannot take any more photos. I don't think. This hallway I remember on the mad dash to the Sistine Chapel when I came with the students. The hallway filled with tapestries. The important thing about tapestries is that they were, believe it or not, far more expensive than paintings were. And so it was a real display of your wealth if you had tapestries, particularly those that were uh, reminiscent of or replicated actual art. The other benefit of these were during the periods of the medieval castles, which were cold and damp, these blocked windows and kept in some modicum of heat, apparently. And then equally important, after the uh, plague hit, it was a common belief that miasma, in other words, the transmission through the air of whatever the plague was as a disease, could be stopped if you could block up windows and vacant open spaces with these uh, incredible large tapestries. This reflects, I believe, one of those moments when the Roman emperors had demanded the killing of all firstborn, graphically illustrated here. And more of the same. And oftentimes the material used, including gold and silver, was an important part of it. This looks like a dramatization of Christ's uh, resurrection and the fear and the shock as he emerged from what I thought was a cave but is variously interpreted as either a cave or an architectural structure. This spectacular room is called the Gallery of Maps. It's at least a football field long. Yeah. Just a couple of scenes up on the ceiling. Now just for the record, I'm facing the door I came in. In fact, the art here is directed or designed to be seen from the opposite end coming to that door. So I'm kind of backing up right now, where if I went this way, you would see it the way the Pope saw it coming from his chambers to wherever it was he was going. These, of course, represent great moments in church history, I'm sure. Here the scene almost looks like Venice. If you look in the background, those three um, posts there. I don't know what this scene is, but notice how pastoral it is. Most of the maps here represented certain church-specific areas. Here's one of Italy. Notice this hall is almost completely empty. Me and another person. When I came here a few years ago in the summer, this was a parade, absolutely jam-packed with human beings. I just wanted to pick up some detail on the sides. The panels are like this. There's one like the one on the left every, I don't know, every 10, 20 feet. Somewhat very graphical. Then the one on the right, a little bit more elongated, seems to be a picture of an individual doing something. Or and then these <clears throat> freeze-like things at the bottom. This map is entitled Italia Nova, in other words, New Italy. So let me go over and see if I can see anything I recognize.
All the signs all the way here said no photographs in the Sistine Chapel. And you can see that this is being originally adhered to me being the anal uh, conformist ho oh, oh, ho asked one of the guards if it was okay and he looked at me and goes yeah it's okay obviously We exit from the Sistine Chapel uh, back to where the entrance was to get our bags as opposed to going to St. Peter's Basilica along this hallway, which is really quite fascinating. don't know what that device is. It's hard to overstate the incredible magnitude of design, art, architecture that you see going through what we're seeing in the Vatican. Imagine what must be elsewhere. This is perhaps a model of St. Peter's Basilica. When you think of all the beautiful ceramic dishes you've seen, you have to appreciate this knowing nothing else, and I know nothing else. And the final coup de gras of this uh, afternoon is you get to hike down this uh, very interesting sloped whatever